Honored key speakers, esteemed discussion and dear audience. My name is Anna Maya Poikkeus. I'm uh, currently working as the Dean of the Faculty of Education and Psychology at the University of Vivasco, and I'm delighted to warmly welcome you to the second seminar in a series uh, seeking to promote Indo-Finnish collaboration in teaching and learning. The series is organized by the Global Innovation Network for Teaching and Learning, in short, GINTL or GINTL, um, especially the, the one which is uh, focusing on India and Nordic Centre of India. Uh, GINTL India uh, is a network uh, in which higher education institutions from Finland, together with partners and counterparts from India, uh, seek together to co-create research-based solutions for development of learning, teaching, curricula, learning environments, and educational systems. The theme of today's uh, webinar is reforming teacher education in the 21st century. Uh, we are going to, to hear a dialogue on, for instance, topics of teacher competence and, and policy reforms. It is of great relevance to sort of discuss what we mean by teacher competence and how we foster them in both initial teacher training and at the in-service phase. Needs for upskilling of teachers becomes especially critical in the times of teacher education reforms, such as, uh, for instance, the, the recent national education policy of India, as well as the recent reforms in Finland concerning uh, extension of pre-primary education and the new mandate concerning upper secondary education. Today we have a pleasure of hearing keynotes by two distinguished speakers and then we have a discussion with commentators who are presenting questions to the speakers. Uh, our moderator for the event today is a highly experienced member of our academic staff at the University of Uvascula, University Lecturer Basi Ikonen, with extensive experience on pedagogical development and international collaboration. You're all very welcome, and Basi, the floor is yours. <clears throat> Thank you, Anna-Maya, Anna and, and also warmly welcome everyone on my behalf. Uh, I have a pleasure to introduce two excellent keynote speakers today. First one, uh, Professor Mithil Ramchand. She's currently a professor and a co-chairperson at the Center of Excellence in Teacher Education Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Mumbai, India. Before joining Tata Institute, she was the director of RE Educational Consortium, Bangalore. Her research interests are in the areas of philosophy of education, initial teacher preparation, inclusive education, and mediation of resources in teaching and learning process. Professor Mitili has led a number of collaborative projects and research studies in India and internationally. Currently, she is leading a government of India supported research on comparative study of initial teacher education in the BRICS, BRICS countries in partnership with the University of Sussex. Professor has offered her consultancy to a number of organizations and being in a panel of committees on teacher education, curriculum renew renewal and reforms. So please, Professor, the floor is yours and we are happy to hear your presentation. Thank you very much for inviting me and for this very kind introduction, Pasi. Uh, may I have the uh, presentation, please? I'm going to focus largely on uh, the initial teacher education sector. That is my area of uh, work primarily. So we'll be looking at uh, some of the contexts of teacher education in India. My colleagues from India will be very familiar with these contexts and I will uh, beg your pardon for repeating many of the points that you're already uh, familiar with. Uh, but I thought it was important to set the context before we move on to what teacher education quality is and how is it conceptualized in the policies 
programs and practices within the country. And we'll briefly look at the current status of teachers and teacher education. Uh, am I audible? All right. And uh, move on to the standards for teachers and teaching that the country is gearing uh, towards. And briefly end with uh, some suggestions for reforming teacher education in the 21st century, which is the theme of today's discussion. The next slide, please. So when it comes to the context of teachers and teacher education in India, as you're aware, the numbers are huge. Uh, there are 9.7 million teachers uh, across grade uh, levels in the country. And uh, if you look at the proportion of teachers, uh, more than 80% are uh, teaching at the grade levels 1 uh, to 10. Um, and in terms of teacher education institutions, there are uh, at present, as of 2021-22, uh, 16,754 institutions that are recognized by the uh, regulatory authority in the country. And uh, most of them are private standalone institutions. By standalone, we mean uh, institutions that offer only the be it or the dl uh, program and uh, as you are aware uh, teacher initial teacher education in the country is highly regulated and the national council for teacher education is the regulatory authority that was set up um, by the parliament in 1993 so moving on to give a very brief overview of uh, the quality of teachers and teacher education as conceptualized in the policies. Um, ours is again a colonial uh, legacy, uh, again a fact that all of you are familiar with and uh, many of the structures continued well into the uh, modern uh, nation, uh, nation state of India. And it was only towards the middle and the late uh, uh, 1990s that the structures were uh, altered to some extent. The first national education policy of India had recognized early on uh, that teachers are important to shape uh, the country and the aspirations for uh, the newly uh, independent country. And uh, this uh, often quoted text, uh, the policy begins with this uh, line, the destiny of India is now being shaped in her classrooms. And uh, I must say that uh, uh, 50 years on, this still uh, continues to inspire uh, many uh, who are in the education sector. And there was a National Commission on Teachers that was uh, set up in 1983. Uh, it was popularly known as the Chattopadhyay Commission. And uh, in a very evocative uh, report, uh, it is titled Teacher and the Society. And it positions teachers and teaching within the socio-political context of the country at that point in time. And uh, they point out that the basic problem with uh, teachers ha has been that it is not backed up by any systematic uh, field. I'm sorry, the problem with teacher education has been that it is not backed up by systematic field research to validate the uh, training uh, programs or the curriculum of the initial teacher education programs. Um, and this, the uh, committee points out, has uh, led to gaps between uh, theory and uh, practice and uh, essentially uh, the commission critiques that the choice of the content of the curriculum uh, is largely determined by uh, tradition or uh, the interest of the teacher educators themselves and uh, by armchair thinking as the report uh, puts it. Um, but more importantly, the commission identifies teachers as partners in meetings the meeting the national goals based on the preamble of the Indian constitution. And uh, many of the recommendations of the first national commission has been taken up 
by another national commission that was set up in 2012 called the Justice Verma Committee on Teacher Education. Uh, they reiterate many of the uh, recommendations of the first national commission. Uh, then 1986 was also the year when the second national policy of education was uh, brought in and uh, largely uh, this policy and the subsequent program of action that was brought out in 1992 uh, is responsible for creating uh, sub-district sub structures for uh, teacher education and uh, bringing in a centrally sponsored scheme for teacher education uh, where financing of teacher education really was uh, brought into the country. The current national education policy, of course, uh, was drafted in 2020, and it makes uh, many uh, recommendations uh, regarding teacher education. There is a separate section on teacher education in the policy, and uh, there are uh, at least 13 recommendations in the policy that directly affects uh, initial teacher education. Uh, moving on, I just have these two quotes from uh, the second national education policy and the current uh, one to give us all a sense of the, the persistence of uh, some of the problems uh, that we continue to face and uh, also the aspiration of the policy framers in terms of how these problems can be addressed. So the second uh, NPE uh, says that the problems continue to remain because adequate uh, um, uh, responsibilities and financial support was not uh, provided to implement the policy. And the current national education policy uh, appears to lay the blame in not adequately thinking through aspects of uh, quality. Uh, and focusing primarily on access and uh, equity. Uh, there are uh, critiques within uh, um, the uh, Indian uh, researchers and scholars who point out to the fact that uh, neoliberal tendencies had uh, creeped in uh, even during the second uh, national policy on uh, education and uh, the subtle shift towards performativity and uh, the need for uh, teacher education institutions especially to uh, showcase uh, certain uh, outputs as against uh, the core inputs and processes that are required for bringing in reforms in uh, teacher education and the current national policy uh, definitely extends that uh, further uh, the aspect of a neoliberal management uh, kind of thinking. Uh, moving on, uh, in terms of the uh, number of teacher education uh, programs, so as you can see in the table, uh, the maximum offerings of the teacher education programs are the two-year diploma in elementary education, uh, which uh, students uh, take up after their uh, higher secondary uh, schooling and the two-year B.Ed program uh, which is the bachelor in education program which students take up after uh, their undergrad uh, degree. Uh, so admission to B.Ed program has remained uh, remarkably stable over the last uh, five years. This belies the uh, fear when uh, the B.Ed program was extended to two years from a one-year program. Uh, this was made uh, mandatory in 2014 by uh, NCTE. Um, the intake in the diploma in elementary education has reduced uh, concomitantly in the past uh, five years, uh, but then the patterns uh, vary across uh, states. Uh, for example, uh, this year, Kerala has seen a surge in the uh, admissions to diploma in elementary education since government recruitment of teachers for primary schools has been announced. Uh, so uh, the uh, admission is uh, strongly linked to the uh, appointment of teachers in the government uh, sector at the states. 
so I already spoke to you about uh, NEP's recommendations in uh, uh, teacher education. So one of the recommendations is a move towards a four year integrated uh, program uh, post the higher uh, secondary and also keeping uh, open the option for uh, the two year be it for mid career transitions and uh, NEP suggests a one year be it as well for those who have completed a four year undergrad uh, uh, program in another uh, discipline. So these are some of the tracks that uh, the uh, national education policy opens up. Uh, moving on. In terms of initiatives to address uh, quality, uh, to improve quality of teachers and teacher education, uh, better pay structure has been uh, recommended right from the first education policy. Uh, and uh, many states have improved the pay structure of the teachers, but then it again varies across uh, states. Teacher eligibility test as a mandatory requirement for fresh recruitment uh, was announced. And uh, initial teacher education uh, uh, preparation is compulsory as per the Right to Education Act. So anyone seeking appointment in a school has to have a initial teacher education uh, qualification, either a diploma or a B.Ed. for example. Uh, reforms were initiated in teacher education uh, curriculum. The 2009 National Curriculum Framework for Teacher Education uh, attempts to align teacher education to the National Curriculum Framework of School Education that brought in widespread and uh, broad sweeping reforms in the school education sector. The national mission on teachers and teaching was announced in 2014 and uh, they have been supporting uh, with grants many uh, teacher education institutions and setting up of uh, resource centers and faculty development uh, programs for teacher educators. Continuing professional development opportunities have been made available through the centrally sponsored uh, scheme post the second national education policy. And uh, currently, that scheme uh, has subsumed under the Samagra Siksha Abhiyan, which uh, combines the school education and the teacher education in a continuum. And support structures for the continuous professional development of teachers exist at the district and the sub-district levels. The next slide, please. So in terms of practices in teacher education, um, we find that the practice teaching component uh, is has been compulsory for almost three decades now, but it is conceptualized more as an add-on rather than as the core for teacher uh, preparation. And um, the current NCT regulations mandate a 20-week internship uh, program. Then there has been a general neglect of uh, content knowledge uh, in the teacher preparation program. The assumption being that content will be uh, learned in their uh, undergrad uh, programs. Uh, now to address this, NEP has a shift, uh, proposed a shift to a concurrent uh, model, as I already mentioned uh, in the previous slide. Now, there has been a fragmentation of uh, curriculum, not just in India, but in many other countries across uh, uh, the globe, uh, which has led to a disconnect between the foundations and the methods course on the one hand and the theoretical and practical knowledge on the other. And uh, the National Curriculum Framework for Teacher Education in 2009 uh, does attempt to address it, but uh, the way it has been conceptualized as uh, curriculum by different states again uh, are very varied. There is past research uh, of teacher education programs and practices in the country and we really need more evidence in terms of what uh, works. There is inadequate engagement of key st stakeholders and uh, consideration of local context and resource in reform efforts in the country and uh, uh, generally uncritical adoption of the standards uh, discourse is what we find 
the next slide please so some of the core challenges in bringing in reforms in teacher education curriculum and practice has really to do with uh, uh, inadequate uh, good quality resources to prepare our teachers especially in the local languages and uh, this is again uh, been a point that has been made uh, uh, by the chatopadhyay commission way back in 1985 but uh, we've not done enough to address uh, this there do exist uh, quite a few uh, isolated attempts to uh, bring in more uh, resources uh, into teacher education but it's just not sufficient to meet the number and scale that is required in the country and uh, teacher education institutions have generally been uh, isolated uh, and that has been uh, quite problematic and inadequate uh, professional development opportunities for uh, teacher educators has again been a problem for the country how am i doing on time yes you still have time left all right thank you uh, So, in terms of the current status of uh, teachers and uh, uh, teacher education, uh, one of the primary factors uh, that has been problematic in the country is uh, the fact that uh, state provisioning of initial teacher education program has been minimal. So, as we saw, more than ninety-two percent of the teacher education institutions in the country are privately run. of course the state does provide considerable uh, resources for the continuous professional development of teachers but uh, if we look at teacher development in a continuum it's important for uh, state provisioning of the initial teacher education program as well since it is mandatory in the country uh, also then there is uh, also the problem of not being able to attract talent for the teacher education uh, programs so this is again something that has been constantly uh, brought to the notice of the country right from the first uh, education policy and uh, many scholars point out that over regulation of teacher education has uh, stifled innovations uh, in the country when it comes to the uh initial teacher preparation then when it comes to the status of teachers there is a negligible career growth path for a teacher and uh, the emergence of para teachers uh in the late 90s has also considerably led to the depletion of the status of teachers increasingly we find feminization of the profession but it is uh, widely uh varied across uh, grades with more uh, women teachers in the primary grades and in the special education sector and uh, definitely in the urban areas across levels you find more uh, women teachers the next slide please so india has uh, recently started moving towards defining uh, standards of course norms and standards were uh part of what the nct is stipulated for teacher education institutions and uh, programs right uh, from when it was constituted they were made mandatory so before nct was uh, constituted as a regulatory body it existed as an ad in an advisory capacity right from 1973 onwards and uh, certainly this idea of standards has been around uh, but the way in which it is being uh, morphed into and conceptualized specifically in terms of teacher knowledge uh, skills and disposition is of a recent uh, occurrence um so internationally if you look at uh, standards the uh, opinions uh, vary um, it has been viewed uh, as something that supports teacher uh, professional uh, development and providing uh, potential uh, pathways for career progression for teachers 
uh, to some uh, scholars who question the attempt of standards to bottle the phenomenon of teacher quality, as Meg McGuire uh, puts it. Um, according to the National Education Policy 2020's recommendation, uh, NCTE is now taking up the role of a professional standard setting body for uh, teachers and teaching in the country. A draft standards framework has been uh, prepared and it is in the process of being uh, circulated for wider dissemination and it would be piloted as well. Uh, moving on. Some of the issues with uh, standards has been the proliferation of edu businesses for raising standards. Uh, increasingly, we see that in school education and it has started trickling into teacher education sector as well. Um, so in the, in the particular context in which the standards framework is being developed currently, it is really in an atmosphere of what is called as the discourse of uh, derision, where uh, teachers are often uh, blamed for the lack of quality in uh, the learning outcomes of uh, students, both by the media as well as the, uh, the state officials. Then there are contradictions within uh, uh, the reform efforts in the country. Uh, on the one hand, you have academicians who are uh, attempting to bring in qualitative reforms in a much broader uh, perspective. And on the other hand, there are uh, policy directives which undermines the professional autonomy of uh, teachers. So this is a tension that we have been uh, facing in the country. Um, so looking at literature on uh, uh, standards uh, in countries that have had uh, standards for uh, more than three decades now, uh, we find that the impact on the classroom practices and student learning has been very mixed, to say the least. And uh, the link between teacher learning, teaching practices and student outcomes are really quite complex and uh, uh, attempting to make a linear connection between them can be quite counterproductive for the quality of uh, teacher education. Standards can uh, have the danger of narrowing the scope of teaching and disempower teachers and can be seen uh, as a means of external control in a situation where uh, teacher autonomy is already quite weakened. And then we need to really think about, do we need uh, teachers who are uh, directed, professionals directed by the state, or are we going to envisage teachers as agents of change and who can bring in transformation, especially when it comes to social justice issues? And we find increasingly that successful school systems across the globe prioritize recruitment education and recognition of teachers and uh, adequate resources for good quality teaching. And uh, we constantly look to Finland uh, on this matter, of course. Moving on. So in terms of reforming teacher education in the 21st century, uh, we have to recognize that teacher standards cannot exist in isolation and they have to be integrated within the larger education system that exists in the country. As Linda Darlingham points out, standards are not magic bullets to improve teacher quality. The standards framework must actually be aspirational and not prescriptive and must ensure accountability both bottom up as well as top down. The system has to be equally accountable to the teachers in terms of making, uh, for example, the working conditions in schools uh, as the recent uh, uh, UNESCO 2021 report on the status of uh, teachers points out. Then the teacher education uh, providers and teacher organizations and networks that are quite robust in the country have to take the lead in implementing standards to avoid the danger of top down uh, efforts. The next slide, please. Um, so again, uh, it should not be an evaluative uh, approach within the performative uh, culture that we are working in currently. 
and uh, definitely the conditions and contexts uh, under which teacher work and uh, under which institutions function are very varied in this vast country. And most importantly, long-term commitment from both national and state governments to sustainably support and resource teacher education is essential. So our cohesive policies for uh, systemic uh, reform efforts to improve educational quality, particularly for the marginalized. Um, that's it from me. These are a few select uh, references that I've put up there. I'm happy to share the entire uh, list. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Ramsa, for this very interesting uh, notes and comments about development and current situation, but also the future of, of this vast country and, and complex uh, culture. Uh, our next keynote speaker uh, could be described to be one of the key influencers uh, of Finnish teacher education development. Uh, Dr. Jari Lavonen uh, is a professor of science education at the University of Helsinki in Finland. Sorry, University of Helsinki, definitely. He's currently a director of the National Teacher Education Forum and the chair of the Finnish Matriculation Examination Board. Professor Lavoren has been researching science and teacher education for over 31 years. He has been uh, active in the development of teacher education in several countries uh, internationally, including Norway, Peru, and South Africa. Uh, South Africa. So please, Warmly welcome, Professor Lavonen. The floor is yours. So I, I hope you can now see my slides. So, okay, excellent. Good afternoon. Happy to share experiences from Finland. And uh, first of all, I would like to uh, emphasize that there is no right system for organizing education and in this context, of course, organizing teacher education. Everything depends a lot of the history and traditions and the context and how the families, what are the family relation to the education and, and so on and so on. So we should remember that always when we are comparing and discussing about different systems. And always it be recommend that it's maybe it's better to analyze processes than structures as such. So in my presentation, I will focus uh, what kind of process we have had recently in Finland, where we have engaged teacher educators in collaborative planning of the national teacher education aims. It is very bottom-up type of approach, and the previous speaker made a reference to Linda Darlinghammond and and, and I, I remember that she was emphasizing in one of her papers that it is possible to have that kind of bottom-up type of approach if you are collaboratively planning the aims and there is collaboration in local level and what is most crucial is that we are having well-educated teachers. Of course, there are certain uh, characteristics or, or uh, structures that are very important for teacher education. So we need competent teachers, teacher educators, principals in all levels of education. The professional learning is important. We should emphasize the professional learning competencies in the initial teacher education. We should, we should share a common understanding where to go and how to go. And open dialogue, interaction, and collaboration are important. So they are from the OECD report. What are the kind of key issues we have to remind? And as it was already discussed in the previous uh, presentation, uh, we are looking for high quality teachers who are educated in high quality programs all over the world. However, our understanding what is a quality teacher varies. There are different 
interpretation of that concept. And even the terminology we are using, there is a variation. In some countries, we are looking for professional teachers, quality teachers. In some countries, we are looking for effective teachers. And actually, these two effective professional, they be, maybe they could be interpreted as a kind of uh, ends in the continuum of, of, of the understanding of the quality teacher. So the professional teacher, it belongs to kind of input type of thinking, so that we are aiming to emphasize the input. So we are aiming to evaluate, teach, uh, educate teachers well. We are aiming to make our aims for teacher education well. And then we trust them and, and let them do quite autonom autonomously their job. Of course, this kind of professional teacher concept doesn't exist as such. It depends a lot of the state policy, how the state understands the role of universities and teachers, how the school site environment that school is supportive for teacher professionalism. In the output type of thinking, countries who are following that ideology, they are more controlling the output. They are organizing testing for education. They are having heavy school inspectorate. They are testing the teachers, evaluating them frequently. So the controlling the outcome is characterizing if the teacher is a good quality teacher or low quality teacher. So uh, in Finland, as I mentioned, we are more looking this professional teacher direction. And, and it means that we are planning together and emphasizing the initial teacher education. <coughs> So now I'm describing what we have done during the last seven years in Finland in order to kind of establish a common understanding what are aims for teacher education. And uh, collaboration is of course important, but collaboration need also output or actually input in this case. So it need input from the uh, teacher education, teaching research, it needs input from the local stakeholders, opinions of the uh, organizers of education, teacher union, and that kind of important stakeholders should be listened also. So uh, in our, our case in Finland, <coughs> before we were outlining the aims for teacher education in 2016, we organized a literature review and, 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 but actually, before I, I'm going to literature review, I should say something about what is known about a successful process. So there is research how, how to plan teach education aims or standards, as they are also called. Uh, so the consensus through collaboration is one topic that is mentioned, and, and also the uh, kind of support to professional learning that should be taken into account in the beginning and pilot projects are important while we are making new aims learning from practice making some uh, uh, changes to the original aims and a lot of versatile communication channels face-to-face -face meeting brainstorming activities through internet and local meetings all over the Finland. So that kind of uh, what the research is telling us about the successful process while making uh, national aims for teacher education. Also, the OECD have outlined the successful process characteristics in the TALIS project last time. The TALIS was publishing the uh, teacher, teacher survey data. They, they outlined what, what might be the good process at the national level when we are outlining the aims for teacher education. So uh, OECD emphasized the careful timing. So typically in a country there is a government which is uh, in power some four or five years. So there should be time in the one government period, time for planning and time for implementation. In our case, we used one year for planning and three years for implementation. And during the next government, we continued with a rather similar process. 
the consensus is important discussion and seriously looking for consensus. Stakeholders involvement, so like these are unions and, and, and municipality unions, and especially partnership with unions is important from the OECD point of view. Resources are needed for implementation, so pilot projects would be uh, given money, resources for, for doing research, how, how, how the new ideas are working in practice, and, and then we learn how they are working, and then we can make some, some improvements and piloting. So then, of course, the dissemination of the outcomes of the pilots. <clears throat> so in Finland, we have had actually two periods when our National Teach Education Forum has been active in outlining the national aims. The first period was during the previous government, and now during the current government, we have continued our work. In the beginning, the Ministry of Education and Culture nominate 100 experts to the forum. So there were people from the universities, applied universities, because part of the teacher education is organized by applied universities. I, I already mentioned the literature review, but it's here now. So we made a literature review, and actually it was done by uh, Auli Tuom and Jukka Husu, who were just recently working with research on teacher education. So they back the current literature about teacher education. We were benchmarking some neighbor countries like Norway, Sweden, Estonia, especially. We organized a national brainstorming. It's important to hear all stakeholders, teacher educators, and then coming in consensus and collaboration to national aims. The strategy in, in 2016, 16, it included a vision, so it, it, was, it was quite a global vision, so good education for the whole globe, that kind of vision. Three main aims, and under the three aims there were some sub-aims, and six actions, so important areas we have to make progress. And then we made implementation through about 50 pilot projects national seminars and also the quality work inside as a part of the process. So we were frequently collecting feedback from the current situation in the, in the, at the universities and especially in the pilot projects. Um, it's important to recognize challenges. Uh, what are the challenges we are aiming to overcome? while we are stating the new national aims. We were recognizing challenges in Finnish education in, in four levels. So the student level, active learning process, and also the learning outcomes. For example, in Finland, the difference between boys and girls in reading competence is, is huge. The, huge, the most biggest in, in OECD. So there are challenges in our system. Students' active engagement, engagement in learning and well-being, especially the well-being was recognized to be low in, for example, in upper secondary girls. In classroom levels, our, our latest curriculum was emphasizing the uh, inclusive type of education and the uh, integration of the transversal competencies to the teaching and learning. So they are actually the classroom level issues, how, to, how a teacher can integrate the learning of transversal 21st century competencies to the classroom level actions. At the city level, how to organize quality work, and, and one of the major challenges in Finnish education is the leadership activities, how to engage teachers also to leadership activities, kind of understanding that leadership belongs to all. Society level, especially those uh, great challenges like, like uh, climate change and, and pandemics and, and that kind of things, so the better interaction between free service and in-service teacher education. Uh, in the literature review, of course, there were a lot of outcomes, but I, I just take three examples. And one, one example is the coherence in teacher education. 
there is quite nice recent research related to the coherence. For example, how the teachers who are teaching at the faculty and how the teachers who are mentoring the teaching practice, how well they understand the common aims and how well they understand what is happening in different places in teacher education. And then the pedagogy. It's not enough that we are having a nice programs, nice description of the of the courses and seminars, but also the pedagogy what is used. And, and the willingness and competence for personal learning, professional learning, but also the kind of progress, how to make progress at the school side. And, and different models for teacher knowledge was also used. This is a simple model, values, education system, how, how it works, and the domains of teacher knowledge and also this kind of professional learning. The national brainstorming, we invite teacher educators, stakeholders, looking for same direction, hopefully, and, 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 and generating ideas, actually, generating ideas what is important in teacher education. And this uh, national brainstorming include two phases, First, the generation phase and then the evaluation phase. So everybody should first generate ideas and then evaluate, rank some ideas of other people. And, and this system we were using, it had, had a kind of artificial intelligence and, and it was able to combine uh, single ideas to the bigger group of ideas and also it was able to allocate the ideas to the participants in a way that it can summarize what is the outcome of the brainstorming. The outcome of the brainstorming include some, something similar that was in the literature review, but there was also coming out something that was not yet so much emphasized in the research on teacher education and teachers. For example, kind of innovative orientation in teacher profession, kind of uh, transformative competencies and, and part, part, role of partnerships and networks in, 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 in teacher job. And then putting things together, this literature review, a lot of discussions at the national and local level, brainstorming, benchmarkings, we come to kind of common consensus understanding what are the domains of aims in teacher education for the next 10 years. So typically 10 years is a period when we are making new aims, national aims for teacher education. So kind of broad and solid knowledge base, expertise in generating novel ideas and innovation. It, would, it includes kind of teacher agency and transformative competencies, and then competencies for development of own and, and school site. The solid knowledge base include uh, domain, uh, knowledge of competencies in the field of uh, subject matter, pedagogical content knowledge, general pedagogical knowledge, learning engagement and diversity, understanding and, and competence in those fields, collaboration and interaction, networking, research skills, ethics, society relations, that kind of, it is not a whole list, but some examples. In Finland, the teachers are responsible for making the national curriculum and, and learning environments development in that field, so they have had the competence in that field. And, and, and for, for also kind of uh, resilience and, and kind of uh, uh, um, ideas how to, how to support students to learn those grand challenges like, like um, uh, climate uh, change and, and, and loss of, loss of in biodiversity and also the pandemic time. So that kind of competencies belongs to that area. And then I was already mentioned that the kind of competence for professional learning and competence for, for making progress at the school level. When I, when I compare to the, some international examples like professional standards in Australia, I can easily see that there are quite similar 
elements like personal knowledge and practices and personal engagement, maybe some kind of uh, transformative and, and innovative orientation is a little bit missing here. But basically the similar. When I, I, when I compare the Finnish teacher education aims to the, for example, the OECD learning compass, I can see that there is the cognitive field is quite well. So the, the kind of critical thinking skill, creative thinking skills, socio-emotional learning, and also know-how and know-what type of things. So this kind of comparison is useful, but unfortunately time is not enough for making it full. So the implementation I already mentioned, maybe I have to skip this one, but it was also important not only have a national aims, but have also resources for the implementation and learn from implementation. And, and maybe the, the, the kind of innovations that they created in the pilot project, maybe that, that was on one side, but maybe the pilot project was were more important for teacher educators, professional learning. So how to support us, teacher educators, for in professional learning. So this kind of common research activities, which are in collaboration with several universities and stakeholders, they are important for ourselves. And these are examples of our national meetings. And I mentioned that the monitoring is important and kind of continuous quality, quality culture in this kind of project. So we, we were monitoring how well the pilot project were working and we were communicating the outcomes and, and the pilot project leaders were able to make a reflection how well they were successful in, in, in running the, the pilot projects. So now I have gone through this kind of example from Finland, how we have been working in collaboration and in consensus for national aims for teacher education and how the ideas have been implemented and how, how this kind of pilot project working has been supportive for professional learning of teacher educators. So let me summarize uh, in a nutshell what might be important in, at the national level. So we should be aware of the challenges and needs. So that was important in the beginning to to look what is what are the problems in our system and how, how, how we are planning to overcome those. Timing is important, enough time for planning, but absolutely enough time for implementation. Engaging teachers, teacher educators, stakeholders, so the consensus is important. Sustainable resources for piloting and resource orientation in the in the making progress in teacher education it is all in this is very interesting that our ministry of education and culture those people who are participating in this activity they are always now emphasizing the research orientation in the making progress in teacher education the quality work as a part of the pro process and project and and holistically at the same time was happening the development of the new school curricula, so the curricula and teacher education reform happened somehow together. So, so thank you for sharing these experiences and very happy to participate in the discussion now. Thank you, <coughs> Professor Lavaren, for this very clear presentation of our, our development. Uh, we have now three uh, these cousins who are already eagerly waiting to make questions to our keynote speakers. And our first expert is Johanna Lampinen, uh, international education designer uh, from the Faculty of Education in the University of Poland. And each uh, these cousins have approximately 10 minutes to make questions and have a dialogue with our keynote speaker. So, Johanna, please. Thank you. Thank you very much for both professors for your interesting speeches and thank you for this opportunity to be able to ask questions. So, I I think that somehow for me, you know, the competencies and, and this 
kind of idea when I was a young and bright teacher. I worked as a teacher in Finland and then a bit here and there and lately at the university. I was very fond of UNESCO's Dolores report. And, you know, if I now look back and revisit the competencies there, I can see that, okay, it's quite the same what we need in the society when we talk about ethics or research orientation or competencies or coping with the uncertainty. Uh, but then, of course, if I reflect even the Finnish teachers and my my pure colleagues from the basic education, sometimes we have challenges to cope with all these things in the context. So that's why I want to ask something about the context and and to make it to see the difference, because uh, when uh, Professor Mutili, uh, you said that in, in India, especially lately, the discourse of derision has been getting very strong. So in the media, the society blames teachers to, to somehow to be responsible. And then from the Finnish point of view, this is now uh, after the first time after the year uh, 84, the teachers are on strike. And so I think there is more weight as the teachers are blaming the government that, you know, we want to have more resources to do our work properly because we have the competencies, but we can't now work and be accountable. But so in that sense, um, I would uh, think about the um, first uh, Professor Muthili. What do you think about the standardizing? Is, is bringing, what kind of possibilities is, is bringing? You mentioned some of them, but now looking at from that perspective to teacher education, because at the same time, we want to have the standards. You were mentioning this teacher eligibility test. And then we somehow, I think also, when I now compare the situation in Finland and thinking of the teachers in the field, when things are getting very complex, when they are multidimensional, when we can see the life, the society, the needs of young people, we want, we start to want to have standards. So in a way, I feel that sometimes the teachers want the standards. How do you see which are the good ways to cope with these two dimensions in teacher education in your context? Thank you. So, please. Sorry, go ahead, uh, Professor Yavi. Okay. <clears throat> so the question about standards. So, so the standards are used widely in, in, in all over the world, and, and and many countries have have those teacher standards or teaching standards, and they are used for outlining what is important in teacher profession, but they are used more and more also in controlling teachers. So what, what teachers are doing, they are used as a starting point for teacher evaluation. There are external, like in South Korea, external evaluators are coming to the school and looking in the classroom what teacher is doing, how well he's working according to the standards. So, <laughs> In, in, in my understanding, the teacher profession is is uh, very difficult to standardize. It is it is it's not only uh, creative or art type of work. It is a real professionalism in teacher teacher work. So so you should have a personal identity. You should have to have a competence for for, for working in the classroom, but also competence in collaboration with other teachers, competence in, in your self-evaluation and that kind of thing. So in, in my understanding, it's really challenging to standardize teacher profession. And we are if we are standardizing it, then we are just looking for those who are in the standards. And we are only looking for those which are easy to measure. So, so kind of creative component and resilience, they are really difficult to to measure. And that's why I'm not so eager to look for standardization. I am more eager to look for common kind of uh, collaborative setting of aims and then trust that teachers are following that kind of aims and and they are supported and, and, and facilitated and, and that the networks are nowadays 
guiding teachers to, to look for in consensus to that direction. So I hope that that was your question I was answering. Thank you. Maybe, you know, I was like tackling with the problem that when you meet teachers in Finland or teacher students, they would like to have the standards for their students to help they work. So there is this <sighs> dilemma in Finland and then also in the society, sometimes we hear voices that yeah. we can't keep this Finnish free yeah. system. We, globally, we are otherwise yeah. being left behind. You are having, <laughs> so you that, are having mm, standards for, for, for teaching and uh, or learning, learning outcomes description. Learning then you are outcomes. again measuring the, just yes. the outcomes and focusing to those easily measurable things. Yeah, maybe, that you is, know, just to, to think about that in Finland as well, we are all the time struggling and having dialogue with these inputs and outputs. And, you, and are when correct. you are correct. Society, of course, it's, yeah. it's not black and white. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, in the middle. Yeah. May I respond, Passi? Yes, please. Um, I would like to differentiate between standardization and standards. Uh, like, as you're pointing out, uh, there are quite a few teachers themselves and uh, teacher educators who say that standards are useful to define for ourselves what is expected as a profession, because it's easy to uh, dismiss uh, teaching as a profession in many uh, conversations uh, with uh, uh, people. And as uh, Lottie has pointed out long ago, that uh, uh, there is this apprenticeship of observations, because everybody has been through the process of schooling, uh, they think they uh, know what it means to be uh, a teacher and what, what it means to teach. Um, so having said that, the problem really arises when we go beyond identifying these, as uh, Professor Yari points out, uh, these sets of aims which you may conceptualize as standards. But the minute you start to uh, attempting to measure those standards and evaluating teachers against those standards, so that is when the standardization process uh, begins. So, for example, if you look at the standards framework that is put out in the public domain uh, by NCTE within India, it it really, I mean, you won't, and no, no one will have any quarrels with it. You have a set of standards for professional ethics. You have a set of standards for professional development, you have a set of standards for professional uh, knowledge and competence. So these are things that we do uh, feel are essential. And in any teacher program, we do go by these set of uh, aims and uh, the set of outcomes that we want our programs to uh, prepare our teachers for. Um, but when it, it's different when a group tries to do this within a university setup for the set of students uh, that come in for that program against setting a set of standards for the entire country as diverse and as uh, complex as India is. So that is where the problem uh, comes. And when you start using the standards framework as a measure for teachers' uh, performance, so it becomes very difficult indeed. Thank you, Johanna. Would you like to comment? Or, or... Yes, thank you. I would like to just, uh, you know, to go forward to, to okay. hear more, and then maybe about the context in India to to ask Professor Dr. Mithil about. Uh, you mentioned in early in your presentation about the National Commission recommendations from 80s and 90s, and then that somehow, if I didn't misunderstand, that the old curriculum, the content of the old curriculum, reflected the interest of teacher educators themselves. And then now I'm th thinking about the new national education policy, and there is the separate section for teacher education. And then comparing when Professor Labonen was saying like how long process was to develop the teacher education kind of a framework and then we have different universities who anyway even still have autonomy to to stream it a bit after that. Uh, 
how do you see the possibilities uh, was in India in the teacher education now? Whose interest it might be serving in the future, it's serving at the moment, and all these possibilities and maybe the the pitfalls that you might face. Just want to hear about the situation more. I'm curious. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry if I miscommunicated that the earlier uh, uh, curriculum was pro teacher educator. Uh, what I was trying to communicate is that the awareness that teachers and teacher education as a formal preparation of teachers uh, is something that has uh, caught the attention of the policy makers early on. So right from the first national education policy, this has been stressed. Uh, and uh, the fact that teacher education uh, is important to prepare teachers for the country has been recognized. Nevertheless, uh, provisioning in terms of uh, finan allocating financial resources has uh, uh, never been the case uh, even now in the country. Um, so the, uh, the tension that I was talking about in the reform efforts, so on the one hand, teacher educator led uh, curriculum reform efforts. But again, it was not uh, as widespread and uh, consensus building as uh, Professor Yari had pointed out in the case of Finland. So, the, uh, But nevertheless, the curriculum reform effort were led by a, a group of teacher educators, even if they were small and not really representative of the entire country. As against the policy uh, uh, directives that were largely prepared by the bureaucrats. So that was the tension that I was uh, uh, talking about. So in the present context, uh, the fact that a separate chapter uh, has been devoted in the national education policy um, is certainly um, uh, is something that we're happy about because uh, uh, has uh, been flagged off as a critical issue within the policy. The uh, fact that teacher education quality has to be improved uh, has been flagged off very clearly in the uh, policy. But then again, uh, the policy intent is not always supported by uh, practice in terms of primarily research, uh, resource allocation. I'm not sure if I answered your Question. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Johanna, and, and thank you, Professor Mithili. I think it's time to ask uh, our next uh, person to join the discussion, uh, Dr. Jyoti Raina, Associate Professor from the Department of Elementary Education, Karchi College, University of Delhi. Please, Dr. Raina. Uh, first of all, First of all, thank you for the opportunity to ask this question. Um, both the professors today have spoken about conceptualizing teacher education quality in terms of standards. And Professor Ramchand spoke about the standards that India is moving towards. In this context, my question is for Professor Ramachand that the centralized regulator NCTE has come out with regulations for teacher education programs on several occasions. 2005, 2007, 2009, 2014, 2018, 2019, broadly along the same structure, the components of norms and standards, in a standards kind of an approach. Now, these regulations are prescriptive, standardized, universal, and they follow a centralizing tendency. And overall, they make for a tight centralized regulatory regime that does not cater to teacher education for diversity, which Professor Ramachand referred to considering the diversity in our country. And on the other hand, teacher education for diversity implies, as Professor Love, uh, Lovenen has emphasized, that regulatory process standardized and in our own Indian context it can't be the same for each teacher education program or teacher education institute. So whom does the regulatory process address in a centralizing tendency and Professor Loveron has also talked about not adopting the one size fits all uh, approach. So my question is that would you agree that diversity needs to be the basis for reconceptualizing 
a non-standardized regulatory reform of teacher education in India, and maybe we can develop plural regulatory frameworks. And how can such an alternative regulatory framework be imagined, which is not centralized or standardized, but contextualized to accommodate diversity in teacher education? If you could provide any concrete uh, suggestions on prioritizing research work in the direction of building such a contextual regulation of pre-service teacher education, um, that's what I would like to know. Thank you, Dr. Raina. A very important point that you have raised. Uh, yes, so uh, NCTE, ever since uh, it was set up in 1988, um, it, so the primary reason why the regulatory body was set up in the country for the benefit of our uh, Finnish colleagues uh, was the fact that teacher education program uh, uh, was being largely offered through the correspondence courses. And there was a proliferation of substandard quality teacher education programs in the country at that point in time, the early uh, 80s. So that is when the universalization of elementary education um, uh, was uh, started in uh, wide uh, scale in the country. And uh, to curb the proliferation of the substandard quality of teacher education programs. Uh, the National Council for Teacher Education was uh, set up in the first place. And uh, within five or six years of setting up of the council, it did manage to bring down, uh, it did manage to close down actually the correspondence uh, programs. Um, but on the other hand, it did not manage to bring down the proliferation of substandard uh, teacher education institutions from coming up. So obviously there was a demand in the country for teacher education program. And uh, since the state was not able to fulfill the demand, the private sector increased uh, it. So marketization actually became much more rampant after NCTE was set up. Um, so in response to Professor uh, Raina's question, um, so the, the the norms and standards of NCT uh, and in a centralized manner was really a way of the state responding to the fact that teacher education is taken as a public good, um, but without adequate provisioning by the state, uh, I think the, uh, the response of the state was really in terms of highly centralized uh, uh, regulation and which didn't serve the purpose at all of quality of teacher education as we all uh, know. Uh, so the definitely the uh, going ahead, what we need now in the country, as you're rightly pointing out, is for devolution of this regulation. It's not to say that teacher education should not be regulated. It is a profession and it needs some kind of a regulatory uh, authority, but the regulation must really be uh, devolved to the uh, local uh, communities and uh, the sub uh, district structures that were set up um, uh, in terms of, uh, for example, the district uh, Institute of Education and Training, they could uh, probably evolve as a regulatory body within the uh, local community and uh, the standards really and the push for reforms in quality must come from uh, the teacher educators community. And I think uh, it is important for us to drive the reform efforts and uh, bring in more consensus among ourselves in terms of what shape these uh, standards can take on and how would we like to regulate ourselves as a community and as a, a profession uh, in terms of offering of the teacher education programs. Thank you. So I, if I, <laughs> I can have also a short answer. So this question is, is really, really important, but also at the same time, really, really challenging. So I, I, should, I would like to emphasize what I said in the beginning that the OECD emphasized that there is no right system and everything depends on the context and history and traditions and, and so on. So, so it is not possible to change ad hoc I have I have seen some examples where a country or a district have made a radical change 
and it, it was a chaos uh, as a consequence of this, this change. So we should think about this diversity or decentralization holistically. So, so I think the guideline that Linda darling Hammond gave, gave us is, is the three point of views are important to think and discuss deeply. And, and the first one is that it's a professionalism and professional identity as a part of that. And in Finland, we emphasize research-based teacher education, which means that teacher educators communities, very research-oriented community, they, they, they are active in international research collaboration, publishing in international uh, forums and, and, and apply research money. And so that kind of research-oriented community and as a part of teacher educators who are studying in that kind of environment, they are also learning themselves to make research and apply the research-based knowledge in they the planning processes, evaluation processes, and, and so. So the professionalism of teachers is a complex and include many point of views. So the kind of um, collaboration culture, uh, sorry, common aims. So common uh, shared understanding of the common aims, it is part of the quality, quality culture. So common setting of aims at national level, at university level, at program level, and interaction between the levels is important. And on the other hand, kind of uh, not quality control, but kind of collecting feedback from the, from the students and from the municipalities, working life feedback at all those levels, the ministry level, the university level, and the program level. It's important. And then finally, the collaboration culture. And, and this includes also the networking and partnerships. In the context of teacher education, the partnership with the providers of education, the cities, how well we are working together in collaboration, our student teachers practice in, in schools. So that is the way how to do that. But, but in addition, there are different kind of bodies and, and meetings where we are sharing ideas. So. There are these three views, the professionalism teachers, uh, common aims as a part of quality culture and collaboration partnership culture. Together we can, we can orient to diversity uh, in, in aims and diversity in, in organizing teacher education. Thank you. Dr. Reiner, you have more questions or would you like to comment and yes. answer? No, I, I have one question that comes from Professor Ravishan's emphasis on the push for reform that needs to come from the teacher education community. And as was mentioned just now, this is a research oriented community that can set quality aims defined by some kind of a regulation. My question is that since teacher education is a complex field of study, that is not a unified arena, but it is divided into two subsets. The first subset is the professional practitioners of education, the teacher educators. That's the field that I come from because I teach in a university affiliated teacher education program. This is the first subset, the teacher educators. But there is also the second subset, which is the social scientists who are education specialists who are pursuing liberal studies in foundational disciplines in education in departments of various universities. Say, for example, uh, the Zakir Hussain Center in Jawaharlal Nehru University which has psychologists, sociologists, historians who pay attention to problems of education. So this division of the field into two kind of subsets often leads to a lack of agreement on the essential conceptual elements due to which regulatory reforms or policy shifts are not necessarily always undertaken on a rational basis. So policy making players in academic led policy discourses in India, for example, tend to identify with either of the two subsets. And these subsets turn into academic correlations which you know sometimes turn into constituencies with very specific views on regulatory themes like curriculum selection, faculty uh, qual qualification, and what constitutes the study of education discipline in itself. What could be the research possibilities for a of 
Uh, again, you're uh, bang on, uh, Dr. Raina, in uh, identifying the uh, key issue in our country. Um, so this division is uh, uh, not unique to India again. Uh, for example, uh, uh, at the Institute of uh, uh, Education uh, in London, the 60s. So you do have the case where as teacher educators, for example, we are expected to take on a lot more pastoral role than is necessary for uh, the faculty at uh, uh, other uh, higher education institutions where they do not require this kind of uh, uh, support for uh, uh, student teachers in our uh, teacher education programs. So that definitely leaves us with uh, uh, lesser time for uh, research when compared to our counterparts in the liberal uh, studies. Yeah. Um, now, having said that, uh, and again, you're very right, uh, so far in our country, at least the voice that has been leading in the curriculum reforms has been that of the uh, um, uh, researchers from education studies. And uh, uh, teacher educators have not yet started contributing uh, for reasons that I've just mentioned um, uh, as far as uh, research uh, is concerned. So I think it is time that we took uh, uh, charge of our affairs and uh, um, uh, again collaboratively build consensus on what are the key areas of research that we need and uh, demand that uh, uh, we be given the time and the opportunities and the space to take up these kinds of collaborative uh, research so as to inform both the um, policy as well as the practice within the sector. Thank you, uh, Professor Lavanan. Do you have a comment for this question? Do we have this kind of challenge in Finland? You, you mean in the definition of research areas or in general the research? So, so maybe one comment. So it's it's important to recognize the kind of key key areas of research that that has been done in Finnish universities in education faculties. So, and it's important to establish a bigger research communities. This is, should be done bottom up, but also somehow also in taking into account the field we are working. So, so again, in consensus, it's a long negotiations to recognize the core areas of research and, and then support the, the kind of uh, communities in those areas and, and, and for example, in the in the making of uh, proposals for for Finnish Academy and, and that kind of, so that progress has happened in, in Finland for I think I was in administration some 20 years time, so almost this 20 15 years time we have been negotiating about the key key areas of research, but it it, it it's it's not possible to give it outside, so it's a kind of long term process we have to go on and. And, and come in consensus to the important areas, recognize them and invest also resources and uh, in those fields and, and support in those fields. Thank you. Dr. Aina, do you have more questions? Uh, I do have more questions. Uh, if nobody else has a question, I will go ahead and ask them. Yes, please. But I'll, 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 I'd not like to take too much of time. We have uh, okay, I'll, we'll time for one more question. Okay, okay. okay. Um, you know, just now Professor Lovinan spoke about uh, locating teacher education studies in collaboration with schools. But uh, again, my question is to Professor Ramachan. The Kothari Commission's report, which is the first commission on education in India, that submitted its report in 1966 that lamented that teacher education is very isolated from school education. But in our country, school education is a very heterogeneous arena and there are multi-layered hierarchies of access within school education. 
there are at least nine different types of school systems in india so what are the contours of aligning teacher education reform with school education when there are so many types of schools unlike the scenario that professor lobenon uh, outlined about uh, uh, teacher education reform in finland which was very closely associated with school education there our school education system is extremely heterogeneous and again this question is very resonant because we are at the cusp of a uh, restructuring of school education which a national education policy 2020 supposedly initiates in this policy transition there is talk about completely restructuring school education in a 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 system which is a foundational stage a preparatory stage a middle school stage and a secondary stage so uh, how do you see this lack of correspondence between school education policy proposals and teacher education reform at the current juncture of policy tr transition because our uh, friends from finland have just spoken that they took teacher education reform very close to school education but when we try to take it to uh, school education or close to school education which is the school we are talking about we have such a heterogeneous school system if professor ramchand could shed some light on this um, that's why it's all the more important that we have a uh, devolution of uh, power uh, at to the local level so uh, while i do agree that there has to be a common set of understanding at the national level in terms of uh, what is aspired Uh, either in the school education reforms or in the teacher education reform um but for one teacher education program to cater not just to geographic uh, uh, variations uh, um, within the country but also to the different types of schooling systems that you're talking about is impossible no one program can prepare a teacher to address all these different kinds of contexts um so that's the reason that uh, um, it is important that we are able to design at the level of the university our own curriculum and uh, we can be upfront about the uh, clientele of schools that we will be preparing our students for uh, for example uh, we are in mumbai and if we decide that uh, our the primary clientele of schools are the uh, mumbai municipal corporation schools and that is what a program prepares uh, uh, teachers for and uh, because context matters in teacher preparation as well uh, and if we do not have the uh, the autonomy to design our own curriculum and we are forced to follow a common curriculum set up by uh, uh, the mumbai university then it defeats the purpose Uh, that is one part in terms of aligning to meet the needs of different types of students is to come up with different kinds of uh, programs where there can be a common element uh, that is core to teacher preparation but uh, uh, really the pedagogy courses will be more should be more contextualized to the schools that we are preparing our teachers for so that is one aspect of it the second aspect also again as you rightly pointed out the lag between school education reforms and the teacher education reform so teacher education is forever catching up or at least trying to catch up with the school education reforms so again uh, it's important that uh, we come forward we meaning the teacher educators come forward as agents who try to push reforms in teacher education that are more aligned to the school education uh, reforms Thank you, thank you, Dr. Raina, for your questions, and, and thank you for for our keynote speakers. Before I call our next uh, discussion, there's one uh, question in the chat that I would like to ask now, and it, it goes like this: Is teacher education program of integrated mode? India is moving towards four-year integrated program as per NET 2020. Do you think that uh, will help in upliftment of quality in teacher education? Do you want me to answer that? Yes, please. 
I simply do not know. <laughs> so that is the problem. Uh, there have been integrated programs in the country since the 60s that is run by the Regional Institute of uh, Education. But they have not been studied adequately uh, in terms of what they have to offer. And whether the four-year integrated program real, uh, or uh, the elementary teacher education program run by Delhi University, for example. Uh, while there are a few studies uh, that do claim uh, that uh, the teachers who are prepared out of the DLED program uh, would do better than uh, those who are prepared by the DLED program, which is the concurrent program, we still do not have enough evidence to make the claim that a four-year program will be able to support teachers with adequate content knowledge uh, in addition to the pedagogic knowledge to become a teacher. So I really won't know. <laughs> Thank you for your honest answer. Uh, now I would like to call a project specialist, Abhinash Bital from Arthur University, Finland, uh, to raise some questions to our team. Thank you, Pasi, uh, uh, for the opportunity. Uh, and also thank you, uh, Professor Ramchand and Professor Lavinin for, and also a previous discussion on, on extensive uh, extensive discussions uh, and then uh, inspiring talks uh, on the, on the, uh, on the more, uh, more, uh, more on the theoretical or more on the regulating part of the of the talk now i think uh, fr from my also ex experience i am more towards the practical side of the implementing things and uh, being a young faculty as aspiring teacher myself especially also for uh, teacher training in in, in the region in, in uh, both in finland and and also in indian uh, south asian region i would like to focus towards the practical sides uh, of the implementation or the challenges and especially i would like to touch upon something that professor ramchand had uh, uh, said in the in the slides, uh, for example, the, on the, one of the challenges, such as on the fragmentation of curriculum. So, uh, as we know, like there is so so much of disconnect uh, of the teachers, um, current teachers, uh, between the foundation and methods uh, versus the real application in the classrooms in the teaching. So, maybe my first question would be that what could be the solution space uh, for future, or or even now when we are into this network. So, what could be the solution space where we could strive for closing that gap? from uh, from uh, foundation or methods to the practical implementation. And then the, another question to go with the same line to, to Professor Ramchand is, uh, do you, do you, do, can you share us some of the best practices or some of the good examples from India, for example, where uh, these kind of little initiatives, initiatives uh, of uh, ground up approaches that has been able to, you know, push uh, either regional or, or national uh, uh, government plans for teacher education, if there are some best practices or good examples that could be shared with us. Thank you. Yeah, so in response to your first question, how do you bridge the gap, as Dr. Raina and I were just discussing uh, earlier, um, one of the ways in which this can be done is to keep the context in mind. So I would like to look at foundation as one axis, uh, so the foundations, meaning uh, what you learn from the sociology of education, from philosophy of education, etc., in terms of the other axis as context. So what does it mean for a teacher uh, to be dealing with, uh, uh, say, tribal children? What does it mean for a teacher to uh, 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 create pedagogically appropriate uh, responses for uh, uh, children in an urban uh, uh, slum? So, Slum is basically uh, underprivileged areas within uh, cities in India. Uh, so these are very different contexts. And when you talk about uh, uh, the methods course, for example, uh, you can't be generic about uh, uh, what works in a context. It has to be very specifically grounded and uh, rooted. So context really matters. And when one teacher education program tries to prepare a teacher for, say, an elite international school, which is heavily resourced and uh, where uh, uh, students have access to uh, uh, to uh, multiple kinds of exposure uh, versus uh, a child from a very poor rural background, uh, 
Um, so the context being very different, I strongly feel that teacher education programs should start offering specializations and uh, pedagogy courses that focus on specific uh, context. And uh, the theory practice divide really, the crux of it is in how do you uh, help teachers understand the context in which they will be placed and the context in which they will be teaching. Um, so if you uh, can find ways, uh, uh, we, we are attempting at uh, Tata Institute of Social Science to design courses that uh, integrates uh, the foundational course with the pedagogy courses in a particular context. Uh, it's the, uh, I mean, it is still a new program. We've just launched it uh, uh, two years ago. Um, it remains to be seen how we are able to uh, bridge the gap. So I'm not claiming we are uh, bridging the gap, but we're making a conscious effort to uh, do that. Um, and India is a vast country, so you were asking for examples of good practice. Of course, there are very many good practices uh, across the country. To name but two on the kinds of uh, grounds up approach to uh, bringing in more consensus about what is uh, needed. So one, I would point out to um, uh, a non-government organization called the Gantar that is located in uh, Jaipur. And they run uh, schools for uh, uh, the marginalized uh, uh, communities in uh, near the city of uh, Jaipur. And uh, the, uh, the kind of approach, pedagogic approaches that uh, they use in the school is extended to their uh, teacher uh, education programs. And uh, some of those uh, uh, methods have found its way into the National Curriculum Framework 2005 that talks about reforming uh, school education. Thank I you. Can you answer your question, Avinash. Yeah, thank you. I just noticed that, uh, I happily noticed that our fourth uh, discussion, uh, Dr. Rahika Menon uh, from the University of Delhi, has been able to join our webinar. So, Dr. Menon, would you like to raise a question to our keynote speaker? Yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you for this opportunity uh, to listen to all of you and to also participate in this discussion. Uh, am I audible? Yeah. Yes. Uh, it, it is indeed fascinating to see the uh, the the quest for standards. You know, in a time when I mean we are talking of standards, we are talking of diversity, we are trying to also think of context. Actually, uh, if one looks at all these issues as somebody who is in the area of teacher education and who is also basically trained as a sociologist of education, so I I mean this quest of uh, bringing in the liberal with the practice the quest of bringing in standards with main, while maintaining diversities, uh, matching up to the challenges of uh, a national, uh, you know, uh, questions and larger social questions with the local concerns of the classroom. I think this is a, this is a very, very challenging area and uh, it was fascinating to hear both the speakers, the keynote speaker and uh, uh, and Professor uh, Lavnonen and Professor Maithili, uh, I had a few queries, which uh, which actually originates from this uh, contradictions of that we are uh, facing, and we've had a long discussion on that as of now. Uh, but just a few things. Uh, I'm uh, interested in say, for instance, in a time we are when we are talking of edu business, when we are talking of neoliberal trends and uh, across uh, across the world, and the quest for uh, uh, standard standards with reference to outcomes and outputs, huh? while uh, not looking at some of the questions of inputs, which is such an important concern, say for for unions or for teachers or for the stakeholders, both the students as well as the teachers. Now, how, how far can this shared vision be a consensus? Huh? Because we are talking both of shared and as well as consensus, which are uh, in, in keeping in mind these diversities, keeping in mind these contradictions. Um, how do, how 
is this consensus possible? So it was interesting to uh, listen to the processes that has been followed within Finland, you know, and, and trying to um, have a shared vision. Uh, uh, Obviously, the different stakeholders are looking at it from different angles. My question is, uh, like, if we could uh, say, for instance, in Professor Maithili, if we could, uh, if we could think of, say, for instance, how is it they say, for instance, we bring in a shared understanding with, say, teacher unions huh? and uh, teach and professionalization of the teacher identities, a very, very challenging area. But um, do we have some examples of that from any studies uh, that have substantiated that? Or uh, I mean, even in Finland, say, for instance, how uh, are the concerns of the unions uh, aligned with the concerns for the need for a professional identity? Uh, that's one question. The other question is uh, arising from um, uh, what uh, was presented as, you know, different learning outcomes uh, or, you know, different reading levels of uh, girls vis-a-vis -vis boys in the Finnish context. Uh, here, say, for instance, uh, we know in, in, in the Indian context, uh, you know, the, the learning processes itself is so um, structured by the social, uh, you know, stratas. So, um, you know how what are what I mean what is the possibilities for researchers to uh, you know to widen this gap? Uh, what kind of uh, what kind of work is required to you know to ensure that we align uh, these interests? The third question that I have is uh, with reference to um, you know it's it's a very specific thing. Um, uh, say for in in the when teachers go as pre-service teachers go to the schools. Uh, and uh, they become part of the school systems, uh, which may not share a vision for uh, teacher education, which is aligned uh, with what the school practices. Schools are practicing, say, for uh, for participating in testing processes, while the teachers may go with a larger set of uh, vision and aims, uh, uh, in, which, which includes in creating an inclusive atmosphere. So how is this shared vision likely to happen? You know, how do we bring the schools uh, to share this vision with the vision of the teacher education uh, institutions? Thank you, Professor Metile. There are several questions. Now you have opportunity to choose which one you start to answer. I think I will go with the last question <laughs> first. Um, because the alignment of vision is something that uh, we face all the time with our uh, uh, graduates, isn't it? They go with uh, quite ideal notions of what it means to be a teacher and uh, with intent of uh, bringing about uh, changes in the classroom only to be very quickly uh, disheartened by the uh, institutional structure and systems. Um, I mean, one example, uh, Vinash was also uh, earlier asking for uh, good practices. So Delhi University, I mean, uh, both of you, for example, have also been part of this uh, uh, reform, uh, grounded reform effort, isn't it? In terms of bringing uh, the alignment of uh, vision. So not only are you using schools as spaces where students uh, uh, gain their uh, field practice during their program but you also have consciously tried to support the university school network and uh, engaging with teachers more uh, closely uh, through uh, dialogues through uh, short-term uh, teacher professional development uh, opportunities uh, the usrn for example uh, screens uh, films uh, 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 once a week and invites, uh, uh, at, uh, at least you know, it used to happen fairly regularly earlier. Um, so I think uh, that is definitely uh, a good practice, Avinash, of uh, attempting to bring in greater alignment of vision between a teacher education uh, program and uh, uh, school teachers. And uh, there is research to indicate that uh, if there is a sufficient uh, tipping point, if you will, a uh, sufficient number of teachers uh, within a school environment who are invested enough with this uh, vision of uh, reform for changes to happen in the school uh, system. 
so um, i think that uh, uh, aspect of uh, schooling and uh, reforms adequately uh, i won't say adequately but uh, yes studies are definitely emerging in our country's uh, context uh, substantively so there is uh, definitely reason for hope uh, on that area uh, regarding your second uh, uh, question about how do we resolve deep rooted tensions um, uh, that have uh, been there for quite a, a while now so on the one hand uh, you have this aspiration for a common set of aims uh, uh, for the country or a common set of standards uh, that we would like the profession to follow and on the other hand we want uh, teacher education programs to be able to prepare teachers for uh, the very different context that they will be uh, going in and uh, in such a scenario how do you even uh, think about bringing in uh, uh, consensus so these are definitely uh, very complex uh, issues and there are no easy answers but uh, i think we have to make a beginning uh, somewhere uh, again uh, as dr raina was pointing out earlier uh, this conversation between uh, those uh, who are scholars in education studies and the practitioners uh, teacher educators i think the dialogue must begin from there and uh, build a consensus at least among the like minded people across uh, these two uh, divisions and uh, uh, begin to engage more with uh, uh, teacher unions so again in our country teacher unions have largely been politicized and uh, they are less academically oriented than uh, teacher unions say in australia uh, i mean i'm just randomly taking australia as an example uh, you were asking about literature unfortunately in our country teacher unions are not studied at all so there is one uh, uh, report from nepa that has uh, uh, looked at the functioning of uh, teacher unions and they find that the union is uh, really more focused on ensuring uh, which is important uh, the uh, the basic uh, uh, standards of uh, uh, salary and working conditions uh, for teachers and uh, academically unfortunately the unions have still not started uh, engaging themselves in so i think but we do have quite a few uh, strong uh, subject teacher uh, networks in our country and these are again very well established uh, uh, for example the uh, physics teachers association uh, is almost 100 years old and quite active uh in the country so uh, i think the best uh, approach towards this very complex uh, issue of building consensus would be to begin uh, with like minded uh, people and try to forge common understanding and then expand this uh, slowly as we go forward so we could begin with Uh, the uh, scholars in education studies and the uh, uh, practitioner teacher educators along with the teachers school leaders and extend it to the subject teacher uh, networks before involving the uh, unions uh, and so on and uh, uh, so forth and your uh, first question you. sorry sorry to interrupt uh, <laughs> professor mitili and professor radika uh, the, the clock is ticking and i think it's time to do a short wrap up uh, a lot of inter interesting questions and and it would be very nice to continue this dialogue but i i believe there will be more webinars and seminars uh dean professor anna maria would you like to say a couple of words before we finalize the webinar uh Well, thank you. I I mostly want to thank you, every everyone. It has been really inspiring and enlightening. I I was really impressed by the really really high level of sort of scholarship and 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 sort of uh, this kind of notion that we can uh, bring up these quite critical uh, constructs and and try to see how we understand them together, whether we see them differently. And of course, we do to some extent, but to sort of clarify them in our minds and and give this kind of uh, what is the best thing of dialogue to to sort of challenge each other. And um, 
I, there was this uh, very interesting discussion about standards, uh, whether they can be perceived in many ways. They can sort of uh, build uh, some sort of guardrails, some like professional ethics, but then they can be also uh, used in a very mechanical way as measures of performance, which would not be sort of uh, conducive to change or transformative learning. So uh, that there's clearly an, an area where we stayed for a long time, which was very interesting. And um, we talked about uh, the, the need for reforms, or so I sort of had this idea that sometimes uh, we don't know, like where does the, the need come from reforms? Is it something to do with the practice? We talked about maybe having some uh, problems with quality where we want to sort of uh, homogenize the, the quality to be more, more high or, or improve our teacher education. That would be one a very uh, a reasonable cause for um, reforms. But then there might also be some other sort of national visions that, that is, is the goal of of maybe uh, revising uh, the curriculum. And we talked a lot about how it's difficult to sort of align the teacher education and school education. I think uh, to some extent, it's, it's also uh, something that we struggle in, in Finland, though, although there is this sort of like national plan of how we do uh, curriculum, there's always this step where we might get uh, this kind of disjoint uh, understanding so what we mean by the text that we have written in the curriculum how it's really sort of understood when we get to the practice so um, there was this idea that it would be um, uh, great if we could sort of have the resources and, and also to have time for for this uh, development of shared understanding of the common co goals but maybe also understand that sometimes we just have to be a little bit sort of patient and and it's uh, imperfect uh, the way that the process will where it takes us um theory based practice uh, was one of the things that i i felt that was was strongly sort of put forward so it, i think that we didn't solve the the, the, the whole question of, of um, professional competence or standards or how to how to see reforms how how can we sort of be um, not just bystanders but um, sort of uh, agents in that change and how we can empower the teachers and teacher unions to be these agents of change thank you very much from the bottom of my heart this is this has been very exciting and interesting thank you for the wonderful uh, speakers keynote speakers and also discussions that the discussion and the comments the questions that you made enriched us uh, so much um, uh, we are very grateful for for all of your presence here and, and thank you for the audience we hope that you come again to the webinar series but thank you for this time bye everyone <laughs> <laughs>